Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you please bow your heads and pray with me. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would be with us as we hear your word and we talk about it, as you, we listen to the things that you have to, to point our attention to. And Lord, we also pray that as we examine ourselves, that you would reveal those things that draw our attention away from you. But Lord, we pray, especially now that you would open our hearts and minds to receive your word by the power of your spirit, that you would guide my words to preach faithfully. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So our uh, sermon passage for today, along with the other two that we've already read, but this uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we're looking at this concept of what do we behold in life? What gets our attention? What is it that we focus on and that, that changes us and our lives? And God has many things where he directs us and he says, behold, look at this or behold, look at that. And one of the things that he tells us is that he unites us. He unites us in Christ. He breaks down division. He enables us to forgive he heals us, and supernaturally he unites us as one body with Christ as the head. We call this the communion of the saints. Behold the communion of the saints. But what does this mean? What does it mean, this communion of the saints? Well, it means a lot of different things. For one, it means that it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter what the color of your skin is. We are one in Christ, one body. Right? In fact, that whole concept of, of race and, and dividing ourselves in this way, really from, from when I was looking, looking up things, it really starts about 500 years ago. It's just this kind of false category that divides us, keeps us from being just one people. Now, before that, we didn't necessarily need that because we have... Plenty of other things that we found to divide ourselves with. You know, we could be against this family or against this, this village over here or this people group or whatever. We found lots of ways. We always find ways to divide. But this one, it's, it's just completely false. It's fake. And the Bible says that there's neither Greek nor Jew, slave nor freeman, barbarian nor Scythian. Right? We are all one. One in Christ. The fake barriers of, that human sin puts up are torn down. And we are made one in Christ. That's one thing that the communion of the saints means. It also means that you have been forgiven. You have been forgiven. All of the things of your past uh, that you are ashamed of have been forgiven. They were nailed to the cross. And you think of Paul, the Apostle Paul. He was a persecutor of the church. Right? He sought out people who believed in Jesus in order to arrest them, to beat them, to kill them. And yet, when Jesus shows up on that road to Damascus, he says, Paul, why are you doing this to me? And Paul believes in Jesus. Right then, he was part of the body of Christ. He was brought in through faith. Now, there were people who were skeptical, Right? They would hear, oh, Paul's coming. And they'd say, are you sure? Are we sure we want to let him in? Right? They were skeptical at first, but eventually that skepticism had to give way to the reality that the church is one. It's united. So whatever your past, when you trust in Jesus Christ, all of the guilt and shame of your sins are gone. And for the person next to you, or the person across from you, the same is true. All of their sin is gone. And so we are one. There's no greater than or less than. We are all brought together because the reality is we're all sinners. We're all in need of Christ. 
It also means that men and women are equally redeemed and loved and brought into the church. Now, that doesn't mean that men and women are exactly the same or that we don't have different roles at different times. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. But we are equally part of the one body of Christ. It also means that it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. Money doesn't mean anything to God. He's got everything he needs, right? And this is a relative term anyways. All of us who live in the United States, worldwide compare, comparison, we're, we're all living pretty good. We're all rich. However, the earthly wealth, right, it has no bearing on God. And in fact, the Bible tells us that we are poor in spirit. We have nothing to give God. Even our good works, it says, are like dirty rags. We come to God with nothing, but he is a generous and gracious God who gives us all that we need. Our righteousness, our forgiveness, and all that we need to live. And wealth is not a sign of extra favor from God, nor is poverty a sign that you've been rejected. We are all the same before God, one body. Now, sadly, our sin tends to come into play, doesn't it? When we look at our churches around the world and we say, you know what, I, I see a lot of division. I see a lot of problems and these things come up because our sin, it enters in, right? We, we still kind of have this sinful nature and it, our personal grudges, our political parties, our personal agendas, our personal ideologies or beliefs, all these things come in and it starts to divide us. And yet we're still one body in Christ. The promise is still true. What God does is still true. We don't always show it, but we are called to live it. And it's always true. Now, of course, this all means that we need to be able to live in relationship with each other. Right? We need to actually be able to live this out. Like it said, two are better than one. A cord of three is not easily broken. We are meant to walk this life of faith together not alone. The unity is meant to be lived out in our relationships. We're to care for each other. We're to pray for one another. We're to teach and learn from one another. We're to correct and admonish each other. We're to serve together. Right? To do all these things together because we are that body of Christ, right? And so we don't do it all in the same way. God gives us different vocations, different roles, different gifts and talents to be able to do this. Like Terrell said, if we were all eyes, right, we couldn't smell or we couldn't speak. God gives us all these different parts. That's why he describes it as that body and that, that image he's showing us that we, are, we have all these different roles and all these different ways of doing things. The eye works different than the ear, which works different than the mouth. But it's all still one body, right? So we're all still to be unified in faith and doctrine, and mission, but we go about it in some different ways, right? How one person serves is going to be different from how other people serve. Some people may be really good at coming up with ideas. Other people are good at organizing those ideas. Other people are really good at gathering people around the ideas, right? Some people are really great just going out and doing the thing. But if we don't have all of those people, nothing happens. Right? We need us all working together, serving together. Same thing is true with, you know, like different people teach in different ways. Some people speak well. Some people, they, they're able to, to illustrate things with, uh, with story. Other people, they, they teach through their actions. There's all different ways that we teach, and, which is really good because there's all different ways that we learn. And sometimes we even need multiple ways to kind of teach us and have it really sink in. And we all care differently, right? Some people, they, they hear someone sick and they're making a meal. Like they are ready to go. Other people, they will, they will call up people just on, you know, just on a whim. I just thought you might need someone to talk to today. You know, other people, uh, they, they may show up and say, I, I heard that your refrigerator wasn't running right. I'm going to help you fix that today. Right? And, and all of these different things are good. Because where one person might not even think, you know, that maybe the person who fixes the refrigerator would never even think to just give someone a call and talk to them. You know, or, or to make a meal, but someone else would. 
And so when we're, we all have these different roles, these different gifts, and we all work together, what happens? All the needs are met. We're able to care for people in the various ways that they need. So this week, behold the communion of the saints. Two are better than one. A cord of three is not easily broken. In fact, three, four, more, all the better. Right, let us gather together. Let us work together. Let us care for one another. Behold the body of Christ with all its different parts, working together in unity for the good of the body, as well as for the community around us and for the glory of God. Behold our need for others. Right, you are not independent. You need other people. You rely on other people. As much as we may try to ignore it, we need to be loved and taught and prayed for. And sometimes we just need to hang out with people. Behold our ability to serve others. To be that person who loves, who cares for, who teaches, who just spends uh, you know, an evening having fun with together. Behold the communion of the saints, because we are stronger together in Christ. That's why he gave us the church. Right? He didn't, this, the church is not a man-made idea. It is God-given. And yet, our attention is often stolen by other things, right? Our desire to be our own thing, kind of to do things on our own. I've got this, right? I've, you've heard the people say, you know what? I'm, I believe in Jesus, but, but it's kind of a personal faith. I don't do the whole corporate religion thing. Right? Or perhaps you think, you know, gathering, the gathering of the believers, it's really only when I feel like I need to be fed and, uh, you know, it's for me being strengthened. If I feel good, then I'm okay. You know, and, and the way I see it is if, if you don't feel the need to, to go to worship this week, well, first of all, you probably, probably need to rethink that. But, you know, fine. Don't go because you feel like you need it. Go because someone else needs you. Go because there's going to be someone who maybe they need to see your smile or they need to have a conversation or they need your encouragement. Go because your kids need to go. You know, go for other people as well. We are one body. We all have to work together. But this isn't just about worship on Sunday morning. You know, how else do we grow in the faith? How else do we encourage one another you know, small groups, youth groups, or even think beyond church. What about our homes? You know, your home is a little community of faith, right? It is a little communion of the saints right there to be lived out in all the ways that the church lives out the faith, right? Are we strengthening and encouraging? Are we correcting? Are we, you know, loving one another? Are we forgiving? Are we doing this with our kids? and with our parents, and with our brothers and sisters? Are we speaking to each other with kindness, or have we been so raised on sitcoms that most of our language is sarcasm and insults? You know, how are we even speaking to each other? Does our home look like the church? It should. It should. It is a little church right there. And rather than beholding the communion of the saints, right, we behold ourselves. We behold our comfort. We behold our phones. Whatever it is that entertains us. And we do those things. Sometimes we don't even realize it. I don't know if you've ever seen the uh, social dilemma, but they, there's a cool illustration that they show in this documentary where um, this this kid, he, he's around these other, his friends and stuff, and this friend comes over. You can see the friend coming over to talk to him, but he pulls up his phone to check something. His friend sees it and just starts walking away. Now, the, he didn't reject his friend, right? He didn't know. He didn't realize what was going on, but he just missed a conversation there. He missed an opportunity to connect just because you know, someone saw him otherwise engaged and said, no, he's doing something else. I'll go find something else and the friend pulls out his phone and right we all start doing that and all of a sudden we're not talking with each other and we don't even realize what we're missing because we're not actively rejecting the other person we're just otherwise engaged 
and we just don't start to, you know, not know each other. Or maybe you don't, you know, you don't realize it because it, it's not like you said, I'm not going to go do this. It's just, I felt, just kind of feel comfortable right now. I don't want to go out. And you, and you don't realize that you just missed this opportunity to grow in your faith or to, to gather with people and, and just enjoy life together or whatever it might be. Right? Sometimes we don't even realize what we're missing because we're not actively rejecting it. We're just otherwise engaged and we miss it. Maybe you don't pray for someone because you just don't even know that they need to be prayed for. Right? We need that relationship. So this week... You know, as we've been talking about in this, the, the idea here, sometimes people give up something for Lent. Rather than giving up something for all six weeks, we're looking at each week, what's something maybe that God wants me to behold that is being distracted by, that is being, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at something else that I need to give up. So this week, we give up what separates and divides us, what keeps us from being that community, that communion of the saints, and this may be different for different people, right? This takes a little, a little reflection on your life, a little introspection. Maybe for you, it is the phone. Maybe it means seriously limiting the use or just putting the phone, you know, as soon as I get home, phone's out. Just so that you're engaged with the other members of your family. Or maybe it means giving up some comfort and being willing to go out and visit with others and gather together, whether it's neighbors or church members or whoever it might be. Maybe it means rethinking how we engage with sports and other activities that keeps us from being able to gather. For others, it might be putting politics in its proper place and realizing that should not be dividing me and other members of the church. And maybe we need to kind of step aside a little bit and have that not be such a big influence. Whatever it is, whatever separates you from the other brothers and sisters in Christ, let's give it up. Let's give up those things that tear us apart, those things that keep us apart, and let's behold the communion of the saints. You know, we were meant to live in relationship with one another, and God gave us the church to be a place that we do that together in faith, right? We walk this journey of faith together. Two are better than one. A cord of three is not easily broken. We were meant to live as this community of believers. So let's behold the communion of the saints. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you know the things that draw our attention, that keep us from engaging with others, that keep us from knowing each other, from loving each other, from caring for one another, from growing in our faith together. Lord, we pray that you would open our eyes to see those things. We may not even realize what it is, but Lord, we pray that you would just give us eyes to see it and then give us the, the will and the desire to put it aside so that we can live as the body of Christ in our homes, in our church, in our neighborhoods, wherever we may find ourselves. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.